Hi, welcome back to Zoomers the podcast. I'm Isla. And I'm Eliana. And today we're going to be discussing the whole world of fast fashion. So um, we were thinking about this topic since being in quarantine, something that I do, and I think Isla does, and a lot of us do, um, is online shop. And honestly, it, it gives me like a lot of serotonin, and I'm sure um, a lot of people feel the same. And like this is like our fashion world right now is pretty much comprised of completely fast fashion. And what that means is like um, like things come straight from the runway or like styles come straight from the runway to production in a super, super short timeline. So we're going to be discussing that today. Yeah. So personally, in my opinion, like looking at like kind of what the definition of fast fashion is personally, what I just see it as is like something that has kind of fast fashion that has like a negative impact on like people's well-being and what I mean by that is like workers who like produce these products they're not treated fairly they're given like unfair hours they're not paid hardly anything whatever it is just some mistreatment that's not really how you would expect a worker to be treated or like like they're just not given what you are when you work a regular job. And so that's one thing. I think also fast fashion is having a negative impact on the environment. So that should have kind of spelled more self-explanatory. That's kind of just like producing a ton of emissions, cutting down like lots of like trees and stuff for like factory usage and just overall being negative towards the environment and not creating like sustainable, uh, materials and stuff using that sustainable materials and then the third thing um which is just not being high quality being very cheap and like falling apart that's kind of just what I see fast fashion as yeah and um I think that not only is like the stuff that we normally see as fast fashion like um before doing like the research and like looking into it I thought fast fashion was pretty much like the brands that we consider pretty cheap or like yeah like very very cheap um but honestly it um like fast fashion that stretches towards a lot of um really popular brands um like stores and malls and things those are all fast fashion because they put out a ton of different collections and in like recent years um compared to like maybe like 50 60 years ago um brands um release more like micro collections than like the two seasons of clothing so that's just like more and more clothes being produced because because people want them i guess um and we produce honest uh okay we, we produce 400 percent more that's a stat um than t even just 20 years ago so it's it's growing exponentially and it seems to be still growing yeah um, and I want to add on to what you were saying about, like, fast fashion just being, like, the, like, kind of assumption that it's kind of just, like, cheap brands. And, like, because I definitely thought that for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know. I don't really know how you can qualify, like, a brand as, like, fast fashion. But just, like, looking online, like, some things are saying, like, for example, that brands, like, Athleta are fast fashion. And I don't think Athleta is, like inexpensive to the point it's like it's pretty expensive for I don't know like people have different ideas of but like when I think of fast fashion I think of like brands like Romwe which are selling shirts for like four dollars and less like sometimes even like a dollar and so like I don't know like Athleta wouldn't come to me mind as like a brand of like fast fashion and so I'm kind of like what even is fast fashion and like also I feel like honestly it's so hard to shop from like brands that people consider to be like a good solid brand for like lots of reasons like being environmentally friendly treating their workers correctly and then also at the end of the day being reasonable priced enough for you to like actually buy it without being broke so like it's kind of like an issue and honestly like looking at a lot of brands like just thinking about athletic wear and thinking about athleta like i always thought athleta was like a solid brand but like i mean if it's fast fashion that's not really great and so then you look at like other athletic brands and you're like, what else can I shop from? And then like Lululemon, that's a popular brand that I also shop from. Um, and they don't really have the best, 
how do I put it? They're like, they're not very, they're kind of all catering to a one size person. They don't have a lot of diversity. And there's been a lot of statements about like the directors and like the higher ups being like, oh, you need to be skinny to fit into these clothes. Like we made it for a certain type and all this stuff. They just don't have good images and stuff. So then you're like, well, let me not support Lululemon. So then you just look at other brands and you just see other problems with them. And I feel like honestly, it's really hard to choose a brand that is good all around because most brands have some sort of issue. And I think the reason why they are such an, have an issue is because they're a bigger brand. So they can they don't have to be really as ethical because they know they have a ton of support behind them because people are constantly buying them in the malls. So I think honestly, like if you want to buy clothes that are like good and you can like not worry as much about it, it's probably better to buy local. And like when you see like these like little boutiques around your town and stuff, like those places are probably better to shop at. Like some of them might have problems, but they're probably more likely to be better because they're like more local and they're having like kind of more of their own designs and stuff. So, I mean, if you can, it'd be better. And then also secondhand, that's also really great. Like maybe the place where it came from originally isn't great, but you're still like reusing the clothes. So they're not going to waste. So that's also really great. And like for us, at least near us, there's like Plato's Closet. And I know they have like really good clothes there apparently and they're really reasonably priced so yeah so just be mindful of what's around you and the stores because I think it's kind of hard to identify like what exactly is fast fast fashion yeah the whole idea of that is that it kind of follows the trends right and what I'm really really glad about is, is like like trends from like the 80s or the 2000s coming back because that means yeah. people are going to want to shop at thrift shops or buy things that are vintage, which is like really great for the environment. And I'm really glad those trends came back so that we can like reuse those clothes and like not have to buy like super new clothes. Um, but that wasn't the case a couple of years ago even. Like I think a couple of years ago, like the fast fashion industry, I guess, was the only thing that like catered towards like what was trending that in that time. Um, and yeah, so if we talk about like the mindset of the consumers. Um, I have another stat here. Most women wear only 20 to 30 percent of the clothes in their wardrobes. wardrobes. Um, and this makes them want to continue buying clothes because they feel that as though they have nothing to wear, um, which I can relate to as well. Um, and I think everyone's situation is very, very different, obviously. Like me going to private school, I had a very, very strict dress code. Um, so I didn't have too much to choose from anyway, so I didn't feel the need to shop as much, um, as say like a friend that went to a public school and just want and was super, super enthusiastic about fashion. So it, it's, it's all on a spectrum, but I think for the most part, um, our generation and generation before us, um, like wants to buy things like pretty much constantly, um, because the trends are so, so fast. Yeah, they're always constantly changing and people are definitely always out shopping. Like people are always going to the mall and stuff like, and like now that things are online too, like you can just get it delivered right to your door. Like it's kind of a problem in some ways and just, I don't know. Um, and then like, for example, like, I don't know, apparently like some brands like categorize themselves as like sustainable like for example like on Patagonia um they call themselves I think a sustainable brand and they have like a whole section devoted to like activism and stuff which I think is like pretty great because they're trying to like raise more awareness and stuff and I know they also give back like what they they're part of like the one percent for the planet which is like them giving back like I think one percent of like what they make to like environmental like funds and stuff to help the planet and they're also like a part of the SAC which is the sustainable apparel coalition which I personally don't know that much about so I was trying to find more information about this earlier but like it just I I don't know I don't know what to think about it because I feel like a lot of these government agencies because I think it's a government agency um that like claim to be like what they are they're not entirely what they are and I was just like looking at some of the brands that they had under it and there's like a brand like their ASOS whatever you want to call it 
like it was under the SAC as one of the companies, which I thought was interesting because this other thing was advertising it as a fast fashion brand. So I was like, is it fast fashion or is it sustainable? You know? So like that kind of was like kind of a red flag to me, but like, I don't know. I don't really know too much about the, their like the SAC's mission to like make that many comments on it other than like, they're kind of just talking about how like their companies, they like measure their outputs in terms of like, what they give the workers, like in terms of wages and stuff and like their environmental impact. And they kind of measure that and they're, com they commit themselves to like doing better in the future. But like, I don't know, it just doesn't sound like a lot. And there wasn't too much information on their like website about what they actually fundamentally do. But I mean, they do have, they do list a lot of brands, which I've heard are more environmentally better because they just have a better impact. So I, I don't really know too much about it. And if these brands are in fact sustainable. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know too much about it either, but I definitely can see that trend of kind of like broadcasting yourself as sustainable or eco-friendly. Um, it, it's kind of prevalent among like a lot of big name like brands. Um, like one thing that like um, that, that I know for sure is H&M, they have a conscious line, which is apparently their um, sustainable line. And if you visit their website and like you look at that tab for their conscious line or their sustainability tab, it looks pretty good. Um, and I don't know, like the whole like aesthetic of it also seems like it's pretty sustainable because the clothes are like natural tones and, um, yeah, pretty minimalistic, um, but I feel like, it's, I don't know, it just doesn't seem, um, like, I'm, I'm, I just wasn't buying it at first, because, because, like, the rest of their clothes aren't eco-friendly, so I don't know why they would have a complete, like, um, like, line of sustainable clothes when they don't want to, like, like, do that, over, like, across the board, right, so, I don't know, I just wasn't buying it. It seemed kind of fishy to me. Um, and later I found that this whole like conscious line is kind of a facade. Um, basically means that, well, okay. So I, wa I watched a documentary basically and they're talking about how they have like things, little symbols in the tags that basically that like show that it's eco-friendly or something. But basically um, means that the tag is like, eco-friendly and like the clothes aren't and okay so like that was kind of fishy to me too and that was in um that was in context with this brand H&M okay, I don't know like I'm allowed to like out them like this but it's already out there um so yeah it's and so like but that might be really suspicious of even other brands too not just this brand and um behind it all like the environmental aspects of fast fashion for me, they're like one of the biggest problems in this area, and not even just um, how they're how like how like it's impacting us socially because of course like workers get really unfair wages and um, big name designers and even smaller designers are getting ripped off from their designs and like these bigger companies are coming and kind of stealing them and like marketing them as their own. Um, even beyond that, like, the environmental aspects are pretty devastating. Um, like there's a lot of water pollution because of dyes and things like that and they have like toxic stuff like even like lead and mercury like in the water that leaves the factory and um, like water consumption too it takes like I don't remember the exact number but it takes a ton of water to like make one shirt um, and that water could have easily been used as, I don't know, as like drinking water in like a third mm -hmm. of the or something. So it just seems so unfair to me um, that, and like, honestly, I feel almost guilty from buying from these brands in the past, even though I'm like trying to like cut down on my shopping problem. Um, yeah, it just it makes me like really, really sad to think about it, to be quite honest. On, yeah, I can relate to that. Cause like, I think some of the brands that I've shopped from are classified more towards fast fashion uh, and I guess at least when I was buying these clothes I wasn't 
really as conscious about exactly what was fast fashion and I kind of just go and see the clothes and I'm like oh this is nice it fits um and then I'm like I'll buy it I guess because I need more shirts I guess <laughs> I don't know I thought it was interesting how you were like people wear like 30 percent of their closet or because I that's definitely true for me but I feel like I'm not trying to like excuse that but like I feel like a lot of my clothes that I don't wear like in fact like because I was like I haven't touched some of them in like years and like I tried them on like some of these things like a few days ago and they like don't fit but like I don't want to have like half of my wardrobe like empty because it just makes me feel like I don't have any options of stuff to wear so I'm like giving myself this like uh like a fake like I don't know I can't I can't think of the word but like give myself this impression that like I actually have clothes to wear, which sounds like I don't have clothes to wear. I don't really know where I'm going with this other than the fact that like, yeah, I don't know. Okay. But there is something else I wanted to like say while I was like thinking about what's in my wardrobe. Uh -huh. um, I have like skirt that's from like Levi's and um, I, I just bought it because like I liked how it like fit on me and it was like a good skirt. And so I was like, I need a skirt. Like I don't have any jean skirts, so I'll get one. Um, and I didn't like buy it for this reason, but I realized after buying it, like the tag says that like, uh, it, it's like, I don't know if all Levi's clothes is like this, but like, it's like part of like, they're, I don't know if they have like an eco-friendly line. I think they're just eco-friendly in general because they're classified as a sustainable brand, but they were saying like, um, it says like that the, the piece doesn't have to be like washed as much. And it also, when it is washed, it doesn't use as much water up. Uh, and because of like the way it's made I don't really specifically remember because I didn't really gloss over like the tap I just kind of glossed over it and like I didn't like pay attention too much to the details because I'm like well I already bought this this is great whatever uh but it sounded like at least from when I read it that like they're making a conscious effort with their clothes to like reduce the amount of water being used which I think is good and I applaud them for that yeah. um yeah, but I think that's honestly one of the only brands. And then besides, like, buying local and, like, secondhand stuff, I don't really feel like too much of my clothes are, like, very friendly. I don't know, because, like, I don't really know where most of my clothes come from, if I'm being honest. I feel like they're just from, like, random brands. I see. Yeah, and I do think the whole, like, thing where, like, you kind of want the variety, that's just a part of, like, American society, I feel like. Um, like, we, like we, we want choice. Even if it's a, even if it's like a, I don't know, it seems like there's only one good choice, we still want it. And like, you can see that a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I read an article in it, about it, um, like within like an SAT practice test. So yeah, and like gave like so many examples. I was like, oh wow, okay. And <laughs> um, so there's that. And also, I think. I want to add, like, like when, when you said sustainable, I kind of, like, had this, like, tick in my brain where I don't really know what that word means, and that happens, like, when I, like, genuinely don't know what a word means, and, like, I want to, like, find it, <laughs> find that definition, and, um, like, when you use sustainable like that, I just realized that I don't know really what that means, and uh, I'm looking it up right now, and sustainable, like, by definition, just means, like, able to be maintained at a certain rate or level so does that mean and like and obviously like there's like sustainability like within like an ecological context um but at the same time um I don't know it just seems like a very big word and like I see that with like um a lot of brands like like they, they toss around the words like conscious or sustainable or eco-friendly and those words don't have any like hard concrete like backing to them so I don't know it just can't be used against them that also makes me um suspicious in a way too yeah no I totally get that like I feel like it'd be a lot easier to trust brands and understand where they're coming from if they actually provided like real statistics statistics with like evidence to support it like they said something more like uh when we make these clothes in the factory um our workers are paid like this amount this set amount and um and we use like these types of 
uh, materials which are better for the environment because of this reason. Like, I don't know. Like, they don't have to say that, like, but I just feel like when things are, like, sustainable, it's like, but do, is it really, like, yeah. I don't know. And so I definitely agree with you that it's kind of just thrown around to, like, convince people to, like, shop there. And I see it definitely does work for a lot of people. Yeah, it definitely does. Like, when, when I, like, look at, like, a clothing site and I see, like, the word sustainable or, like, eco-friendly, I'm, like, I'm, and, like, I, I kind of feel better about, I don't know, buying something from that site because, because of those words, even though I don't quite know what it really means in this particular context. Um, so I think something we can do to kind of combat this, um, I don't know if you've heard of, like, capsule wardrobes, but they're, like, wardrobes like um comprised of like I don't know maybe like 30 something pieces um and that, that includes like shoes and like accessories and everything and like they're super like they're like staple pieces and you just kind of like throw them together and they're for people who are like always traveling and stuff and that concept is like really foreign to me I don't know if I could ever do something like that but it seems pretty cool and like I know some people who are trying that out do you have any takes no yeah, I think that is so cool. Like, that is something I've always wanted to do because then you just have, like, basic pieces that go with everything. But I think, like, if you're trying to create a wardrobe like that for, like, someone like me who doesn't have, like, a lot of money because I'm, like, just a kid, you know? And, like, when you work, you obviously don't. You're making, like, practically minimum wage. So, like, I think it's, like, hard to, like, build a whole closet like that because, like, you have to build up and work to it. But I think that's such a cool idea. And, like, I feel like some of my pieces are definitely a lot more unique. Like, I can think of, like, some of my outfits that definitely wouldn't go with other things, but I do try and buy, like, pretty basic things, like, just, like, plain one color t-shirts so they can go with, like, a lot of things, and, like, honestly, looking at my wardrobe, like, I feel like I either have really statement pieces or, like, really plain things, so then it kind of works because you don't want to, at least for me, I don't like having a totally plain outfit, but then if I have that one statement piece, it, like, makes the outfit really interesting, so, like, that's what I try and do, just have, like, and what I'm trying to do is just, to, like, get a collection of, like, a t like, I'm trying to find, like, a solid t-shirt that I really like, and then buy it in, like, a ton of different colors, like, five colors, and then just have, like, that one t-shirt, and it can just go with lots of things, and then I can just add more statement pieces to it, because I feel like that's an easy way to, like, and then you don't have to buy more clothes, and you can just, you know, save your money for more important things. Yeah, yeah, so that's something that I definitely want to try, like, in the future. I don't know that right now just because um but I definitely think that last year I could have used a capsule wardrobe because like like with, with the school dress code and everything there were only so many things that I could wear anyway um so I think de definitely last year I could have during the summer I don't know <laughs> um but yeah so I have some friends who've um tried out capsule wardrobes and I have like um, watch some videos of influencers who lived off, lived off, or used the capsule wardrobe like while they were traveling or something, and it's getting a lot of good rep. Um, apparently, it's a lot easier to choose like clothes when you wake up, um, and overall, like better for your mental health as well. Yeah, I mean, with the whole influencer thing, I can see that because, like, I don't know. There's this one guy I was following for a little bit because I discovered him through someone else and he like lives a very minimalistic lifestyle in general like I think he kind of wears like the same basic jeans and t-shirt every day but like not like the exact like the one t-shirt like for like weeks on it like it's just like he has like multiple that t-shirt so it's like this very basic outfit and like his whole life is very minimalistic and I think that's honestly really great and he was saying like all the upsides to it like he doesn't have to worry about all these things because it's like his lifestyle is just really simple and he can focus on like the people who matter to him and like not focus on materialistic things and honestly he was really inspiring and like I was like I kind of want to live a minimalistic lifestyle like it seemed like kind of fun and so I mean like I would be down to try it and I feel like it'd be really cool because like looking at like the, all the stuff in my life I don't feel like I have too much stuff because like I don't, I generally, when I buy things, I think about, like, am I genuinely going to use this or not? So I don't think I have a lot of stuff, but I feel, still feel like I have a good amount of stuff that I don't need, which isn't entirely, like, my fault. Not that it's, like, anyone's fault, but, like, just that, like, sometimes, like, people give you stuff that you don't need. Um, so I just think people need to be more conscious about what they buy and if they actually think they're going to use it. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I wanted to add something, and it's not specifically about, like, fast fashion. I mean, like, it is, but, like, not really. So, like, 
uh, what was the brand? It was like Shein. Is that how you pronounce it? Shein? No idea. Probably. Yeah. Someone was saying it was like Shine, and I was like, I don't know. I thought it was Shein. But anyways, so there was like this thing going around. I think it was honestly like yesterday or the day before about how like A is a horrible brand in general, but like B, they had uh, some of these like clothing lines that aren't as sustainable at least they're the they're more known for doing things like this where they have like they publish like unokay symbols and stuff like that and Shein was being like accused for having like that piece of jewelry that was like the swastika and so I wanted did you hear about this I did not okay okay I thought you might but anyways I want to address it because things are so misleading and people kind of just jumped on the conclusion that this symbol was a swastika and that they were trying to be offensive or something and be like, but that's not what happened at all. And it's really like, at least to me, like this might sound ridiculous, but honestly, it's really been getting on my nerves recently. And I'm honestly getting so upset by it. Like the way that people keep twisting things and like, they just jump on the bandwagon and they don't look at the facts and they're so quick to be like, guys, look at this. And, like, it's great that everyone's trying to raise, raise awareness and stuff, but, like, you can't just republish things and be like, guys, look at this. Like, this is what's going on without actually having your facts yourself. Like, you need to fact check because otherwise you're spreading, like, wrong information. So, anyways, like, I'll basically explain it to you and for everyone else who doesn't really know. Basically, there was a symbol and, like, um, it looked like a swastika. Um, so, I will completely give you that or give everyone who thought that that. But, like, it wasn't because basically, okay, so the swastika symbol it's like, I mean, you can look it up, but basically the way it's rotating is like this way. So it's rotating clockwise. Okay. And then the, uh, the way that it was advertised on Shein was counterclockwise, which may sound like not that much of a difference, but it actually is because uh -huh. basically there's this ancient Buddhist, uh, symbol that goes counterclockwise and, um, the swastika was actually taken from the Buddhist symbol and then they decided to reverse it to make it a swastika so it could be very obvious it was a swastika because like the direction matters. And so like this symbol has been around much longer than the swastika has as a Buddhist symbol. And like the Shein, they put like, obviously like maybe they did make it, they wanted to make it a swastika and they maybe wanted to make it offensive. And then they put it in the opposite direction. I don't know. But, but like, that's not what their intention looks like to me because the way it's advertised on the website, it's in the direction of like being the a Buddhist symbol and there wasn't they weren't advertising it as like swastika like let's like I don't know so like I just feel like it's very misleading to people and like obviously they or maybe it's not obvious but they've taken it down now because they saw like some people are getting really offended from it and so they took it down and stuff which I think is like response like it's it's like good I guess if people like are getting offended because like I don't know but like so like but, like, in like, since it was a necklace, it probably could have been as easily reversed and worn as, like, a swastika. Uh, but, like, I don't know. It's just kind of frustrating me how, like, some things are, like, seen as bad. And also, like, other uh, companies are being, like, attacked for, like, being, like, advertising this and that and saying offensive symbols. And, like, I honestly think, like, probably some of them maybe are offensive. And, like, maybe they were meant to kind of be offensive, but I feel like some things are also blown out of proportion and people, like, look at it and take it the wrong way, like, in this one instance. And so it's kind of just frustrating for me, like, when I see all of this, because, like, I feel like also, like, I'm, if I'm being honest, when I saw this going on, I thought it was a swastika and I was like, oh my god, that's so unokay. And then I, I, then I was like, I need to do more research behind this, like, I need to, I can't jump to conclusions, so I did. And then I realized that. And so I just think, like, people really need to fact check. And honestly, it's just, like, making me kind of upset and also like this is completely not the episode like we're, I know this is like extremely off topic but I just kind of want to add it in like a lot of people have kept keep saying recently like how horrible America is and yes there is a lot of problems with it yes there is I'm not denying that there's a lot of issues but there's also a lot of issues in a lot of other countries that are much worse like people don't even have the right to protest like in China people a guy literally two days ago may, or just like I don't know if it was two days ago but basically like yesterday or something he was carrying a flag in China in Hong Kong I think and I think I want to say he was killed but I think he was killed uh, I don't have the I didn't read the entire story but basically like just for like carrying a freaking flag he was killed and like they don't even have the right to protest and at least we have free speech here which obviously like 
okay. And so like my point is, is obviously there's a lot of problems with like America, but it's just been really frustrating recently how a lot of people I know are like, America is so horrible. And I'm like, okay, maybe you look at other countries and you don't see as much racism going on there. And obviously there is problems. Like there is systematic racism here. Like I don't deny that. And obviously it needs to be fixed, but it's not like a horrible place. And like changes can be made. It can be better. So, like don't look at it in such a negative light. Like we have so much, we have so much here. And yeah, so I'm just kind of frustrated. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, so like, I don't know. I feel like it kind of relates because I feel like a lot of these fast fashion companies that at least the ones that I saw were like American based. So like, yeah, that's kind of the link there. I agree because of course, like living in America, that means that we're privileged enough to be able to be talking about things like fast fashion. Um, and at the same time, like fast fashion is an international issue because it's doing damage to our environment. And a lot of these companies ship internationally and are um, and ship from foreign areas and are manufactured in foreign areas. So yeah, it's definitely a worldwide issue and something that we should all think about. Yeah. And honestly, I think just like the takeaway here should just be that like there's a lot of brands that are monopolies and they have fast fashion issues because they're just have a negative impact on lots of things so in general just try and buy secondhand and local and try your best to just support companies with better ideals and don't be misled by things that label companies as sustainable because sometimes they really aren't so just make sure you're fact checking and making sure that you are doing the best you can to make the world a better place as cheesy as that sounds yeah all right so we'll see you guys next week bye bye